Welcome back to Gun Tote in Minnesota, and today I'm reviewing this Maven Optics Angled S3 Spotting Scope. This is their premium model. It's 13 inches, 60 ounces, has fluorite glass, fully multi-coated lenses, exceptionally clear and bright, excellent contrast and color fidelity. It is waterproof and fogproof, has a lifetime warranty, direct to consumer, and I absolutely love this spotting scope. I'm going to tell you up front, and I'm going to take a long time showing you all the many ways that I've used it. Well, one thing I'm stoked for is the ability to turn this guy with a little bit of an angle. So I, instead of going over here like this, I can turn the body and it's got different settings. You can actually feel it click into place. There's one, there's two, there's actually three, four, so you can do some funny things with this one, but I would say right about there is what I'm looking for. And then it's going to lock into place when I tighten it down here. Tightening knob is on this side. Okay. It's a very, it's a dreary day out. I apologize with the lighting, but not a thing can be done about it. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and move this around on the tripod provided by Vanguard. Thank you to Vanguard Outdoors for providing this tripod to the channel so I can film and make cool videos like this one on this spotting scope. Appreciate them very much. Okay, and the wheel moves so freely. It's a very smooth wheel. It's easy for me to stay in the glass and get on the general focus there. Okay, yeah, this is a nice combination right here. I'm going to go ahead and increase magnification. It's pretty crystal clear on a dreary, dark, you know, kind of overcast day. It's a pretty good image. Definitely sharp. I like the sharpness on this a lot. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about glass quality a little later, but just going to tell you that I think it's a, a very, very crisp image, very sharp. Definitely in the center of the glass, uh, looking at some fine detail, being able to pick that out. Now, I'm only looking at a little past 100 yards, so uh, I will put that to a test much further on camera and talk about that. But I have tested it out to a few hundred yards so far this point in my usage and a few hundred yards I felt similarly that it was pretty pretty tight image pretty crisp not a half bad eye box either considering uh, how small this package is the way they designed it I think the eye box is pretty forgiving all right taking a look at the image let me go ahead and refocus because I turned down the magnification a little bit at 100 yards, I don't need to be using 40 power to spot these impacts at all. And on 20x, um, uh, absolutely, I can spot all my impacts. I can disting distinguish between them. I can see, like I've got a couple clover leaves on there. I did 10 shots, and unfortunately, they're in two little strings. So there's five shots over here and five shots over here. And uh, so two different groups, and they're clover leafed. So at 100 yards, I can tell one, two, three, four, yeah, about five. I can tell that there's five in that one, and then definitely another one, one, two, three, four, and then a little flyer, five. So I can see very clearly at 100 yards on just 20x. I'm not on 40x, I'm on 20x. The detail is very good. It's not like a binoculars where I'm using both eyes and getting information to both my eyes. It's limited. By going through one eye but then again it's got this big objective it's got awesome lenses fluorite glass if i remember correctly yeah i'm gonna say that that is much much better than your average spotting scope that you're gonna get in that 12 to 1500 dollars range um, those are good probably not going to have the same quality of features definitely the fit and finish on maven products is very high that's one thing I can just say across the board. Their fit and finish is awesome. It's got a very custom feel to it. 
But image wise, you know, that's kind of the bread and butter here. You're not going to buy something like this just for fit and finish and the way it feels and the way it looks. Hopefully you're not going to buy it for that reason. You want to know if the glass is actually up to par. And this, I'm going to say at a hundred yards and at a few hundred yards as I've looked so far, I'm really happy with that. Let's go ahead and bump up the magnification and see what field of view looks like and darkening of image. brightness is still very good you know this is a really overcast day to be using glass in general but yeah when i bump it up to 40 power well now i can see everything okay at 40 power the detail is good enough uh, on my marker markings i can tell where i doubled up on the lines And I can basically stay on the gun like this, take my shots, and just look over. I don't even have to stand up, which is pretty lazy, but I don't even have to stand up. I can just look over. If I'm looking through my glass, and this image is not bad. This is Japanese glass in this particular uh, optic right here. I can look through that, and I can generally see where my hits are going with a 30 caliber bullet especially. But let's say you move this down to a smaller caliber bullet, or you're shooting into a... Uh, uh, some sort of media or substance that isn't quite as clearly contrasted. You're shooting against an animal, or um, you're trying to count tines on a, on a deer, trying to count points. You're going to want better contrast. And a scope can do a certain amount, but something like this is going to blow it out of the water, and it's just configured in a way where I think detail is going to be really, really good. It's very sharp, very crisp. Lines and edges look excellent. And uh, looking around the edges of the glass at 40 power, you know, basically right up to the edge. That's a, a very consistent image. Definitely not seeing distortions in there. It looks good. I think this uh, so far has been very promising. I'm excited to use it in other situations and extended ranges and other applications, but so far it feels like this is going to be a very optimistic review, and, and it should be at the price point, but I'm excited. This is a small package, and they get away with a lot in this small package. Okay, one more time. Let's just review some of the features. It does come with caps, and they have a little string attached to them. It's a pretty nice rubberized cap. Fits well, and I don't have concerns about it coming off. One thing that I wish, I wish that there was an easy way to attach this cap to the device, I guess, in a more natural way, some sort of little... Um, tab or something to attach it to there are ways you can go about that with this one installed i could wrap it around to some degree and that's a very simple thing to do and now it's you know it's kind of attached all right so that's a, a simple way to do it i just wish there was something where i'm not going to lose it because i know in the heat of a moment in a hunting situation especially or at a competition things are getting moved around you're going from stage to stage and stuff just gets jostled and sometimes lost but this is a workable uh, solution for now, and I'm not going to complain too much. On the other end, on the objective end, you do have a piece that's going to pinch into place. So it's got spring tension on that. Let's go ahead and just move this around. So you can see that this, you pinch, and it's going to find its home there. And then if I take that off, you can see that it has a built-in sunshade. So it just extends over the lens or the objective rather, like that. I think this is a great idea. I think everybody who's making spotting scopes needs to make them with something like this because it's not really extra weight. It's built into the design. It's not that hard to do. It doesn't cost you a lot. I like the way that they put a little bit of uh, a feature here, something to grab onto to pull it off because when things get cold, like right now it's generally cold. It's about 17 degrees out. Uh, and then with wind chill, it's even colder. It's, it's probably closer to five. And so it just gets a little harder to go, you know, like grab onto things. And all of the Maven product, products have a really nice feel to them, but they're also functional and they have kind of a grippy texture. And so having a little bit of a design built into that, so I can just grab that and bring it out. Those couple little horns, not a bad idea. Good texture on that. And the fitment isn't sloppy. It all feels appropriate to me. Okay, another feature that this has, something that I already discussed, but I want to show you one more time. I'm going to go ahead and spin spin this around. 
So this is just brilliant. I like this a lot. I know that some other spotters come with this, but I like that these settings are so tactile between your uh, standard viewing setting and then the different levels of cant that you can have. Um, again, here's a place where the scope cap is gonna wanna come off with a lens cover for the eyepiece cup. It does have a, a big range of travel. I don't think this needs to go quite as far. If I was gonna make one minor edit or change to this, I would just have it not go out quite so far because it can get to the point where it's just sloppy sitting in there. And of course you're gonna tighten it every time when you're done and it's in the position you want it to be. Just saying, I don't think the screw actually needs to travel that quite, uh, quite that far out to be functional. But that's such a nitpick, guys. Absolute nitpick. This has a really great texture on the knob. So again, when it's cold, it's hard to grab things. Like right now, I've got, you know, I'm beginning to get frostbite on my hands a little bit. I can grab onto that and quickly adjust it. If I'm sitting on a, a hill somewhere and I just really quickly want to have my rifle set up and then this set up next to me, I can look over and... One of these positions like that, left-handed, right-handed, left eye dominant, right eye dominant. There's lots of reasons why this is a compelling uh, feature. And then if you're shooting CMP or you're shooting off the ground, this is going to be really nice to be able to shoot off the ground. And you're, you're probably not going to have it all the way low like this. You're probably going to have it more in that configuration. And if you're using a, a straight bar or a, a regular tripod, this is going to work really well in a uh, prone position especially. 20 to 40 is plenty of magnification to get you out really far and use this, by the way, in competition, especially because the better the glass quality, the less magnification you actually need. Then, of course, I want to talk about the general focus here. This large wheel that goes all the way around, goes all the way around the body, stands out well. It's got a really nice grippy texture, uh, very unique. It's, it's different. It's just different than a lot of other products. I think that's why Maven does so well. Uh, so they just stand out with excellence, with product quality, and then the features themselves just have a little something extra to them. And if this is your one hobby, like for me, this is my one hobby, is outdoors, shooting, long range, spotting, that kind of thing. I want good glass and I want good features. And I like the way that they make the product stand out and they don't sacrifice the image quality. Uh, that's an important part of it, especially at this level of product, which you would expect the price point. I'm going to get to the detach here in a second. I just want to talk about this. The magnification adjustment ring here, same as this, buttery smooth, great texture. You don't have to go very far to get from 20 to 60 power. Or sorry, uh, 20 to 40 power. Not too bad. It's not much of a turn, and it's very easy to turn, even in the cold. <laughs> like I said, it's very, very cold right now. Getting to the eye cup itself. You have different stages. One, two, three. One, two, three. And it's very functional. It does exactly what I would expect it to. Smooth, operational in all the ways that um, I even know how to test. Okay, this does remove. And on the back, if I turn this around, there's indicators. So you know which way is unlock and which way is lock on the very back. So if I wanted to remove this, I would shift the tab over to unlock. Right now it's unlocked. There's unlocked, and I'm going to grab the texture and the grip right here and just twist to the left, lefty loosey, it's going to come off. So now I can store this in the uh, case that it comes with. It comes with a, a nice soft nylon case for each piece to keep them separate. You don't want to be scratching these lenses. You want to protect them at all costs, really, with a spotter. And then also you have an exposed piece of glass in here. You're also going to want to protect that piece keep that in a case but you can travel with these now with a smaller footprint and maybe just a little bit less awkward or switch things out in the future which is a great great idea lovely design i think move it over now it's locked again and i'm not worried about that coming loose at all all right we're about five minutes to sundown right now or sunset i'm looking at a target at 230 yards from where i'm standing right now and if you can tell them around me there's been snow but there's scattered uh, plots of dirt and weeds and brush and our summer targets out there that are steel are white but they've been impacted so there's white and gray and when the sun goes down the white and gray patches all over it really conceals those targets even with a scope you actually have trouble picking them out because they blend in so well they're like a perfect camo 
but with this spotting scope at 20 power here at 230 yards I was easily able to detect the edges and the difference in the um, focus I guess between the back berm which is behind it another 15 yards and the target itself in the target frame it was not too hard for me to pick out the target and the edges which are white against white it's a different shade of white but it's definitely white I think that's a, a good indication of sharpness yep I can make out uh, absolutely the difference between a 6.5 impact on there or, or it could be a 30 caliber hit from today and the 22 hits I have on there and uh, it's it's easy for me to tell that's at 20 power if I go ahead and bump it up to let's just go up to 40 I'm gonna have to refocus that knob moves really nice and easy and even in this low light situation it was already a low light day very dark dark hazy seeming at 40 power the image does not darken significantly just a little bit but contrast is still very good even on that white and gray target now I have other footage where I'm going to show you scope cam uh, footage you're going to be able to see for yourself with uh, at least some resolution but I'm telling you with my eye the resolution of this target is pretty decent at 230 yards the character of the impacts on steel I can see the edges and the way the spalling went out when I'm looking at the weeds and the brush around I can see the difference between the browns the grays and a little bit of black looking into the shadows and the dark spots because the sun is no longer reaching here that's definitely where I want to know can I see contrast in the shadows and man that's pretty significant on the cattails themselves I can see the feathers and the hair popping out behind can make out quite a bit of detail now it's on 40 power and I should be able to see a good amount of detail with a, a fluorite glass or a really nice quality piece of glass field of view is you know I'm gonna say it's decent but I'm pretty happy so this 67 millimeter objective it may not be an 80 but with the quality of glass that I'm looking through right now I'm not sure that the 80 would be worthwhile for the things that I do personally and so packing around something like this this is top-notch this is exactly what I want it is uh, not to gush too much but it's it's exactly the kind of optic that I'm into the 80 millimeters I like for the purpose that they have if you're gonna sit in glass all day and you want to shoot especially in the evening and you need you need that big 80 millimeter objective to let as much light in as possible and you have an optic that's constructed well enough where it makes sense to have an 80 great. one thing I can definitely appreciate is that they come in these protective cases for the eyepiece and the body because I kind of scratch stuff up sometimes things get wrecked I throw things in a bag like today I was in a major rush just to even get here and uh, just a little rough with things but now I can go ahead and pay attention to what I'm doing get it installed turn and then I'm going to lock and now I'm good to go but these are a useful uh, tool for protecting it as I travel, especially when I didn't want it um, try to fit in there like this. I actually took that out and then slipped it into a sleeve inside my Everly stock here, and that fit really nice. All right, I've got to tell you guys something that I think is insane. So a little bit of the fog cleared up, and I'm using this 20 to 40 power by 67 on this really overcast day. Sometimes that helps, sometimes it hurts, depending what you're trying to do. Um, at 1,000 yards of shooting on paper with that 300 PRC, I can see those bullet impacts now I do have to look and stare for a little bit it's not immediately clear but actually I was I was going back and forth on the focus wheel here and right there wow I can make out my impacts at a thousand yards with this just barely 
but I can make them out. This is the part where I need to be careful because every person's eyes are different and I cannot guarantee that your eyes will be able to make it out even at 600 yards. Sometimes I think there's a little bit of skill involved with picking out impacts on paper. I've noticed people with really high quality gear before not being able to see their impacts at like even two and 300 yards. And I'm like, what are you doing? Um, I guess it's just how eyes are constructed and people's um, abilities and maybe practice. But I'm telling you against this cream colored paper, I can make out two different groups. I shot two different groups and I had uh, taken off some elevation so I could separate, distinguish the groups, two five shot groups. And I can make out four of the shots on top. And there's some a little lower and to the right and I can make out four of those shots. So I'm only missing one of the shots in each group. I'm gonna tell you, I've never had a 40 power optic that had the quality where I could see, I could actually see my impacts at a thousand yards easily. Sometimes when the lighting is just right, it does help and you can do some cool things and you might notice a little bit more shadow here or there. Um, but I don't think today is a just right lighting situation. I actually think it's the quality of the glass. Um, actually today, if anything, it seems like sort of a hindrance that I'm looking through so much fog. That's just awesome. Now, beyond that, I'm going to go over to colors. And so I'm just going to move this. Got an orange target down there. Now my orange target has, uh, let's see, so it's painted orange, it has white on the head, the shoulders, and it has a little bit of pink. And then I've got some orange clay pigeons down there. And there's an orange three inch dot on a piece of paper on my steel. So on my, my actual two thirds size Ipsic target down there, I can make out every single bullet impact on that steel at 1,030 yards. And again, I am on 40 power, it's maxed out. Let's back that off a little bit and see what that looks like. Okay, right now, where am I at? Gosh, I, I don't know exactly where I'm at because it has these uh, bubble increments, so it doesn't have a number. There's no numerical value that's necessarily uh, associated with that on the side it's just less power but i'm guessing we're at my guess is that's about 30 power right there no it's less than that it's probably a little under 30 power so i'm gonna go ahead and focus it now man what an image yeah i can make out every single bullet impact i can see tiny specks of uh, dirt and rocks there at 1,027 yards. Broken up pieces of clay, very, very small pieces of clay. I can distinguish rocks from each other. The detail on this is very, very good. And you know what? At uh, five and 600 yards, I knew it was good. I knew it was like pretty decent. And I was seeing that the fog cleared out of the way just a little bit. And now that I'm here at 1,000, I'm, I'm really familiar. I have a great mental image of what this looks like through all sorts of kinds of glass. I was just shooting a, you know, nearly $3,000 optic. No, it's like 2,500, a $2,500 optic. And that glass is excellent glass as well, but I am not getting this level of detail. This is far superior at, uh, let's see. So right around 27 power, I can make out so much detail down there. I can't imagine how much better this would look on a, a nice clean day if the air was more clear. Field of view is decent. Um, I borrowed this to a buddy for just a second so he could look through it. And he said, man, it seems like the depth of field, you know, is kind of a, it's a short distance where things are, are clear and you know, you kind of touch it and it's out of focus suddenly. Um, that was his opinion. I just wanted to share that because he has definitely looked through some glass before and that was, um, something I kind of don't feel the exact same way and that's okay I could be wrong uh, when I look at some different distances here I'm looking at 1030 I'm looking at uh, about 927 and then the closest let's see that would be the 600 yard berm what I'm looking at from 600 out to a thousand 
because I have a nice decent field of view that 67 uh, millimeter objective is not bad at all that's in lots of light and I have a big large field of view you know I'm gonna say from that 900 past a thousand it looks very very good and I don't think I'm losing a lot of contrast or sharpness or detail just a little bit I can tell what's most in focus that's definitely true but I'm not losing a significant amount there at 900 and then I come even closer and the detail is still pretty good at uh, 600 now if I bump that up back to 40 power I can still see the 900 okay it's in focus I have a thousand thirty yards in focus and 900 doesn't look too bad it is slightly out of focus but it doesn't look too bad I can still see a lot of detail at 927 I can still see the weeds here that are about 800 yards away I can make out individual stems and sticks so my opinion is depth of field is actually really good with this um, comparing it to other optics that I've used I don't have a huge line just being completely transparent I don't have a huge line of you know right around that eighteen hundred to two thousand uh, dollar price point spotting scopes I don't have a huge amount of comparison there but I can compare this against like twelve hundred dollar spotting scopes and uh, this blows it out of the water there just is no comparison at all between the two the glass is clearly superior in here you know fit and finish feel design aesthetic I think this is superior uh, but the actual image I'm getting down there is really really good it's very tight it's very sharp so something that I did recently which uh, may seem foolish to some people but I, I used this at an NRL 22 match and it yes 20 to 40 power is a lot it's a lot a lot a lot to use uh, when the targets only go out to, I think we shot out to 230 something yards, or maybe it was 250. No, I think it was 250 yards or so. That does seem like a lot of power for shooting like that. And field of view would be a one concern people would have. Um, I got on the glass and I started practicing with it a little bit. I was actually using it on this tripod as well. And this one doesn't have normal pan features and all that. This just has the quick clamp. It's kind of a more of a rifle shooting tripod, anyways but it did extremely well and I backed I definitely had it on 20 power all day I'm not saying I zoomed in much more than that except for on the KYL racks I was definitely shooting on the lowest power available and I did not have significant trouble again going back to that depth of field thing I did not have significant trouble tracking and we did something a little unique during this last match first of all I went with a rifle in the wrong ammo that was unique and it was the worst score I've ever shot and it was on my birthday that's amazing but uh, number two uh, we used the full field ahead of us and so we had quite a wide range and we're doing it on very very small targets so all the way from the left all the way to the right we've never shot like that as far as I'm aware at a match yet at least ones I've been to and so that means field of view tracking finding targets was really really tricky because we're doing it from the prone and ground that is kind of uh, you know there's some swales in there and there's some uh, ground that was tumultuous or it's roughed up pretty good and so you have to uh, kind of get your bipod heights up high enough. Anyways, that being said, very, very small targets spread out really far. And to find them, actually, when I was behind my gun, I was struggling a little bit with that stage and the other ones with the wrong ammo. I was struggling a little bit. And then I got up and I was spotting for other people. And going between those several targets, I think there was, what was it? So it's five targets, two hits a piece, I'm sure, something like that. And going from the left to the right, scanning this field, distances between as close as I think one was as close as 37 yards and then a little past 100 scanning between those distances was not difficult and I was able to lock on to my to my target really quickly um, and obviously I'm keeping sc score you know I'm, I'm clicking for impacts as well so it's important that I actually see the impact and uh, one cool thing about using this and using on 20 power and tracking was there was a hit on a very very small target that was a just barely a glance I couldn't hear it if you were just looking with a 8x power binocular I don't know that you would have seen it especially if you were not uh, on a tripod stabilized but shooting off of this with 20 power and extreme clarity 
I had a perfect look at the glance on that target, which just barely moved it. So I was able to give him an extra point. He was happy about that. He should be happy that I was using this optic. And so as far as concerns about um, very, very close proximity shooting or spotting, looking at birds, trying to track with targets, maybe in a hunting scenario, I have changed my mind. I don't think this is too much and I'm not really that concerned about it. It is easier to use a pair of binoculars and most people are gonna recommend that. But if you're a one-stop kind of person, you want one item that can do many things well, this is perhaps something you could consider. It's gonna come down to your skill set and how good you are at tracking with things, locking on quickly, operating the magnification or the focus here, which is really smooth. Um, if you're really good with that, then it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Uh, I would say, obviously, this is designed for longer distances, okay? 100 yards and out is definitely what something like this is designed for, but it is not restricted to only those things. I feel very comfortable taking this with instead of a pair of binoculars with a lot of different kinds of shooting. Um, in hunting, I'm still favorable towards the idea of binoculars. And in fact, I've done some reviews for Maven with their binoculars, their C18 line. Um, those are also heavy power. But uh, yeah, binoculars definitely have their place. This isn't gonna replace binoculars for all people and everywhere. But for me, I just think the versatility is probably here more than people recognize as long as you can carry that footprint and you don't mind the a little bit of extra weight because there is some density here with that really high quality glass. So the fluorite image really won me over. I think that's the biggest part of this, but not only that, I think the compactness, the ability to take it apart and have it into the two pieces there and make changes possibly in the future, different eye cups and eye pieces, it's a really high quality product. And the image that I'm getting is excellent. Like I said at the beginning, if the outside looks great, but they sacrifice the internals to make the outside look good, and outside aesthetics are placed above the internal, well, that's really frustrating. And I see that sometimes in precision rifle scopes where the outside aesthetic has more attention to detail than the internals. And that's a problem, especially now that I'm pretty much ruined for glass. I, I really look at scopes differently, and I'm looking at this spotting scope and comparing it against everything else that I've used and that I have, and 20 to 40 power being able to do everything that I want to do, and I mean everything, every single kind of spotting activity where I would use a spotting scope. This can do it, it can do it well, and in more than well, I think it's Excalibur. This is my favorite that I have ever gotten behind, and I plan on making more content with this, more videos, more hunts, more competitions. I think I probably could recommend this above everything else at the price point let's just say $2,000 and under, there isn't a better spotting scope that I know of or that I've gotten behind myself. I think it's worth repeating that this performs exceedingly well in low light situations. The majority of what you saw filmed here was in low light. And in fact, I had another about 40 minutes of footage. It just would have been such a crazy long video. I couldn't do it. So maybe they'll save that for a part two, but I did a lot of my testing in low light because it's winter, there's not a, light, a lot of light left. And then we just had gloomy days and that 67 millimeter objective, I do not see you know, a diminishing of light as I'm going from 20 to 40 power to the point where it makes me not want to use the higher end of the magnification. 67 millimeter lens objective is going to do just fine. Exit pupil is going to be 3.35 millimeters down to 1.65 millimeters. The field of view, if I put it into feet for you, is going to be 141 feet down to 100 feet, so it's still pretty big. Brightness is calibrated at 11 0.22 down to 2.72 but i'm telling you that i saw a really nice bright image and i did not think it was diminished significantly with magnification the eye relief is 17 millimeters to 16 millimeters i think that's pretty consistent with what i saw if you're curious about the eyepiece construction it's a five group seven element the nearest focus that you can get was three meters i think at 20 power that's uh more than sufficient. The prism is a Schmidt Schon prism and it has the dielectric coating. Of course, it's phase corrected as well. The lenses have oil phobic and flat multi coatings. The storage temperature, it's rated for 40 below up to 158 degrees. So pretty excellent temperature there for storage. And then functional temperature, which is different, is negative 13 up to 140 degrees. So still pretty high on the high end and I would say reasonable on the low end. Uh, being in Minnesota, I always like to see a nice low temperature, at least into the negatives, and it definitely gets there. 
Again, this is uh, Japanese components that are assembled in the US. And so you're getting really, really excellent quality control on all of this. I highly recommend it. And as I previously mentioned, I would put this against anything $2,000 and under. I think this is the best of the best of the best. Great job to Maven. I would film more, but these Amish carts going by. Man, it's like having busy traffic in the city. Cart after cart.